Well, we went about 15 minutes and didn't record, but we'll start there, see where it goes. But, uh, you know, the reason I called it Upgrade, Lord of the Upgrade, because breakthrough, and especially in the new year when a lot of people start prophesying the little rhymes they have and, and their words for 2023, and I don't pay attention to me, too much of them. A lot of it's been breakthrough. And so that, to me, is just like a redundant religious word that, that I like. I like new words. I like words that, that have meaning now and not keep us in locked in this old uh, place where we're, we're uh, you, you guys see my thing, I said, uh, you know, a seatbelt, uh, you, you know, I think, Diana, you brought this thing up, and that was stirred me up on this little little video I created. You said, unbuckle your seatbelts, and, you know, I say that all the time, and I said, well, I'm going to put this little thing together. And there's fireworks going on. I said, you know, I was like, whenever you, uh, 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 Whenever they say, uh, buckle your seatbelts, it's going to get wild. Did you ever see it really get wild? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. So it's in the spirit realm, a seatbelt is a limitation that man has put on you. If you're going to go beyond what they think is acceptable, you're going to get in trouble. And, there, and the meeting is probably going to get shut down because it's beyond human reasoning or where they think it should be so i was like it's time to unbuckle our seat belts and let us go where no man has gone before and so uh, i'm excited for this year i'm excited that i'm outside the realm of time that we don't have to categorize things as 2023 anymore it's just a continuation of what god has been doing maturing his sons uh for uh sonship and as he is, so am I in this world. So it's exciting to me. So I just want to know what you guys are sensing. What are you hearing? What's going on in your life? Maybe we talk about some things and share together and just have a family time tonight and see see what happens. It's good to see you guys back again. So cool. Mm -hmm. Good to see you too. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that was a phenomenal time with uh, uh, Steve Kiyoko. That was phenomenal. Oh, and yeah. I'm seeing your face reminded me of that because oh. I was impacted and I know you were. I seemed like you were, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. The fear of God. I still sh I still shake. It's that hasn't left me. Um, something really powerful happened to me there. And yeah, yeah. Um, pretty deep too yeah it's wonderful yeah he's an amazing young man and uh, uh glad to have him back on the leadership team and and he he can he can get in your face <laughs> he'll argue with you you and he's he's so smart sharp in the spirit too and and uh, i think he's been humbled a little bit over his last two years of being away but that's yeah, which is good and me too but uh it's always good for us, right? So, uh, but he is really, really uh, in a realm uh, similar to Doctor O or Ian Clayton kind of, kind of stuff. And we didn't even talk about really what we we're gonna share that night. But it's just I said, you know, uh, Steve, just just whatever's on your heart. And all this came out. It's like, yeah, boy, that was good. So, makes me want to go back and listen to it again. I think I forgot to put it on the Patreon site. Did you guys see it there? It was on YouTube, but I don't think I put I it on know. the Patreon site. I didn't look on Patreon for it. Okay. I know it's, it's well worth well worth a listen if anybody mm -hmm. didn't catch it. Um just this uh gentleman now we're getting I'm getting to know him because I didn't know him before from Kenya, but sharing so being and being so vulnerable. And there was such an anointing on that. I think almost all of us in the question and answer afterwards were practically in tears. We're having some sort of like beside ourselves moment because God was so stirring on what he had gone through and what he, where he's at now. And in the replay too, it's going to grab you in the replay too. I mean, it, it was, oh wow. I sent it to several of my cronies that we all know. And then it's like, oh my God. <laughs> so there's actually, we have access to it it's where where do you find it on youtube on where yeah on my channel uh just 
on your YouTube yeah, channel? My channel. Uh, I can send it to you if you remind me. I can send it to you tomorrow. Okay, uh, I will. Yeah. Uh, I missed it. I'd love to see it. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's on my YouTube. You can go there. Uh, just go into YouTube search once you get there and just search my name. And it's right up at the top of uh, my videos. And, and uh, But I'm trying to hook him up with Gil Hodges and some of those people that... that uh, love that kind of stuff as much as we do and uh get him connected and get him out there promote him a little bit and get mm -hmm. him going he just moved to the united states so he's over in the uh, uh, la area so we're definitely going to have him back on whenever he wants to come it's like any of the other leaders whenever whenever mm -hmm. So what do you guys, uh, what's going on in your world? I want to know what's, what's going on there with you and, and uh, share it a little bit with me. It's a whole lot more, but I just want to hear what's going on uh, with you. What are you sensing? Uh, I know I have been brought to shut down. And like I said, two days before Christmas, I, went, I, was, I had surgery on my shoulder and I'm not allowed to drive. And if you know me, I live in my car. I actually just want to smell my car. It's like, because I'm always on the road and I'm like, I can, I'm just totally, totally on lockdown. Mm. And, and, and I'm like, Lord, um, mm. Wow. And if you're understanding the stillness, it's no longer just, you understand when you come into a stillness with the Lord, it's not about any desire of your own. There's no prayer request. There's nothing you're asking for. It's true stillness. It's just, hmm. yeah. And I'm yeah. just learning. I'm just learning that what it is, what we've not, what we've made stillness, it's so far off. Mm -hmm. yeah come on and, and it's amazing because i really when i shared earlier that i did not need the medication they gave me um percocet or oxum medicine i thought nope i don't need this and i took it the first day because they had shaved the bone they've done different stuff on my shoulder and um but then i just decided i'm not taking it and i've had absolutely no pain thanks the lord no pain and um, I, I am being sensible for once in my life. I wear the sling and keep the shoulder close to my, you know, I'm not doing stupid. But I know there's a season of shutdown with the Lord. And I'm just beginning into it. And so I know there is something and a shift that has happened that has taken place. And I'm not going to be able to articulate a lot of it. But um, one, I want, just want to mention this briefly because it just popped up on my thing. You know how those things show up. You, you haven't watched things for a long time. And then all of a sudden, and Bobby Connor was on one of the Sid Ross show. And the Lord took him into the courts of heaven and says, I don't have the key. And he says, you are the key. And um, mm, shana, ha, ha. And in the moment, the Lord he was writing the shepherd's rod and the Lord said to him, the gavel of the Lord. And he realized 14 years ago, he posted something on that. And so I just thought about you when, when he shared that the gavel of the Lord. So there is the gap, the, the Lord is, there's a ruling in our favor. There's a ruling that's taking place right now. And we are the key to enter into the courts. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's good stuff. It reminds me, I went up to stay uh, at a friend's cabin in Moravian Falls. And she took me over to where uh, Bob Jones was buried. And it's just a normal grave, not even a, a stone. It's just a stone in the ground. Had his name on it and beside his uh, ex-wife there. And uh, they passed. And... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't do these things just to go, you know, sit on somebody's gravestone and receive an impartation. But the Lord said, I want you to lay down, face down on his grave. And that's all he said. So I laid down. All of a sudden, I could feel these three angels. And there was three angels that were with Bob Jones that were 
were about 30 foot tall, each one of them, and were imparting to me his, uh, I don't know if it was his mantle, but similar things to him. I don't remember the names of the, one of them was Glory, and I think another one was Revival, and I don't remember the third one, but but each one of them, I just, I, I was laid face down for about 10, 15 minutes, and I was just standing up engaging with these three angels. I couldn't see them with my natural eyes, but I knew they were there, and the lady that uh, hosted me there, she was there too, and she's, she said, oh my God, what's going on here? And I said, well, there's Bob Jones' three angels, and they said there that they are there all the time. Whoever comes to visit him usually has an encounter with, with his angels, and they release whatever. So that happened, and so I'm remind, reminded of that story that, that I used to go watch him at Morningstar before they moved over to uh, the the uh, the property they're in now, and, and he would sit there. The one thing that impressed me most about Bob Jones, he would be talking, and you didn't know if that was God talking or Bob Jones talking. <laughs> it was like this seamless intertwining of the two together in a divine mystical union. It was like, this is so weird because, uh, you know, I was just, uh, I've never seen that before. And since I saw that, you know, I've heard hundreds of messages by Bob Jones, but that's the one thing that really stood out to me every time I saw him, how he was so one with God, and and that really it it drove me to to that desire in my heart of oneness and union, and mm -hmm. and uh, that scripture of one John four seventeen came later out of that, and so cool cool experience. That's Thank awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Can I can I tell you my favorite Bob Jones story? Yeah. Um. This was, I was years ago in the vineyard and the head uh, guy there was John Wimber and he had back and I don't know if it was the eighties or nineties, I can't remember. But anyway, it was, they were doing things with Kansas City Fellowship and Bob Jones and Paul Kane and all of them. So uh, uh, at that point, John Wimber had been going to England and ministering with some of the churches there. And um, in fact, I found out later the Anglicans love renewal. So it was great, but um, and I worked with many of them in Hong Kong, but uh, John Wimber decided I'm not going at some point, I'm not going back to England uh, to do another seminar with these people, this group, because I don't think they're getting it. And I just don't think I'm going to invest that time or attention or whatever the reasoning was. And so he said, um, the phone rang and he picked up the phone and it was Bob Jones. And at this time, he was like, Bob Jones didn't even have his phone number. The Lord just gave him his number. And he was like, who's this? And he said, well, you know, kind of his old country voice. This is Bob. And well, he goes, I've just been talking to the angel of the over the Church of England. And he was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, he was like, John, he was like, the Lord says, yeah, you're not supposed to cancel those plans. You've got to go talk to that church. The, the angel of the Church of England says it's supposed to happen. So he was, he hung up the phone, <laughs> dumbfounded, and went ahead and rescheduled the meeting. Uh, How's that? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I do believe we are going into some amazing times wow. of, of encounters. Uh, and I think, I think. The last few years, especially for me, has been a time of uh, a deep, deep, deep maturation process, best I can describe it, uh, like a, a pulling away, like Joan is describing, a come away with me uh, time, and, and I almost thought, well, it's been seven years, and it seemed like it's become a lifestyle now where I just, uh, it's just who I am now, it's that lifestyle. And when I had a uh, ex girlfriend wanted to get back together, and I was kind of interested in that, and and uh, <laughs> and uh, 
she called me up not long ago and said, uh, "You don't need to be alone, Terry. Let's 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 just hook up and you know get back together." And la 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 la. I go, girl, you have no idea. <laughs> Abraham's sitting on my couch over here, and I'm having these encounters with Enoch and the angels, and I'm not lonely. <laughs> I'm having all these time, great times with the spirit realm that that uh, are just blowing me away, and yeah. And she said, well, you're going to have to make a decision. Uh, I told her, I said, I feel like I'm supposed to be like Paul and not be married. And uh, and so, you know, I don't date or anything. And <clears throat> uh, so I was supposed to be like Paul and say, well, you, you're going to have to make a decision. I said, well, I think I already have. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. <laughs> We still talk once in a while, but not not as much as we did. But but uh, well, you're just in two different realms, and and I'm having these all encounters, and you know it's uh, it's two realms that, that it's two odd. realms and two time time frames. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going like we had the best of times back when we were dating before. And, we had really, really great times, and and uh, and not to say we wouldn't it'd take a lot of work, but but uh, you know I got a lot, I got a lot happening, and it's not. I'm not saying no to a relationship. I'm, I'm not one of those people that's going to say oh, I'll never do that again, you know. And my mentor told me Bill Lackey at Christian International told me he was over all the prophetic. He said, uh, Terry, if God wants to come get you, he'll knock you over the head with a sledgehammer if he has to get your attention and and he's done that many many times so i you know i have to be willing to change and, and a lot of this last year was was allowing that process to happen and allowing the the things that don't feel so good uh, to to reveal me you know the evil in me the wicked ways in me and lead me in the way everlasting so it's been good it's been challenging and and you go like did i make the right decision here i mean that could have been a good deal uh it could have been a bad deal i don't know but i don't feel like in my spirit i don't feel like that's right for me to do on that that premise or that it might be good it has to be something more so what's going on with you guys? You guys are making me talk too much. I'm excited <laughs> to be back. <laughs> Remember, I'm an introvert. You guys have to say something. It's the Terry show. <laughs> uh, you're you're doing great, Terry. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> I appreciate all the sharing. It's so good. Um, so I will say, um, last year, God was showing me a lot about um transitioning that it was a time of transitioning like with the shaking which there was a shaking um there's a shift and with the shift things move um into different places and some things fall that weren't supposed to be there um so with the shaking there's a shift and there's a transitioning and the transition's not always easy uh, because we have to empty our hands out and let go of some things and some people, not saying people are bad, but some people do not get to journey with us uh, because like you were saying, different directions, different, um, just different relationship with Jesus, with Yahweh and the heavenly beings, the great cloud of witnesses. Um, and it's okay but we have to empty our hands in order to receive what God has for us in this time. Like mm -hmm. we can't just, I can't hang on to what I had before because I'm different. <laughs> like the river of God is flowing and I'm flowing with it. I'm flowing with the Holy spirit. I'm not going to be stagnant. And the, the close people in my inner, inner circle, I'm, you know, we're moving together. Um, and so that's one thing that God has really shown me how to have peace about that. And 
with some people that I feel like mm. have known me, not I feel like, but have known me for years and years and years and years. I've been the same person, but now there's, there has to be better boundaries. Um, not that I'm pushing them away, but they don't get to have all the same attention um, as before, you know, because they're in a different direction. Nothing wrong with that. God's with them. But um, so God's been showing me a lot about that. And um, it's been interesting. Uh, part, part of it has been really tough. It's not been easy, but there's been a lot of joy and freedom that's come from that because now I get to be exactly who I am. I'm not trying to be or feeling like I'm being put in a box um, to be something that I'm not. Like, I'm not that person anymore. You know, I talk with angels. I see them. I see the great cloud of witnesses. I, I saw them yesterday. They were, you know, looking in and I waved and, you know, um, I get to be in the throne room with Jesus. And, you know, like Jesus, um, <laughs> Jesus was well, just, just one little part of this, but um, Jesus and all the people that were in the throne room, like we just went walking on the, um, in the, on the atmosphere and we were like, Jesus said, I've given you eyes to see, govern with me. And that's, that's my next season. Like this, I've been learning that. And I've been getting permission to do that, but that's what Jesus has for me more so now than back then. And so all of us, we were just like, he would point out somebody, like for me, he pointed out this little boy whose mom left him. And me and Jesus went down there and we gave, like touched his heart. We put a heart on his heart. And I gave him, Jesus gave me a picture of Jesus to give to him. And he folded it up and put it in his heart. And um, then we went back up and like he smiled. We went back up and it was like this joyful parade and there was praises and we were all just walking and singing praises and there was music and we would just like Jesus would point to somebody else and we would go and do the thing. And it's just been really cool. So um so that's that's my uh, long summer or short summary of a really long story, but um, that's where I'm at now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good place. Amen. Yeah, wow. Sarah, it gets. I don't. I can relate to what you're saying, but I'm curious because as as you begin to walk in this way, and then if there others aren't coming there, it's hard to talk with them um, again about the Lord. Right. I mean, it, I don't know. I can relate to what you're saying though, because I'm, I'm experiencing the same thing with some of my friends that I've had for years and they're not coming in the same way. And it's, it's not that they're not good people or whatever. It's not that the Lord's not with them. It's just that the fellowship's different. It it's changed. I can relate to what you're saying. Uh, very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that God has been showing me is um, to walk more intentional, um, especially with those people. I don't want to say those people, but to be more intentional. together. But I say that to my with my angels a lot. We're all in this together here. Um, but to be more intentional and pray about it with you know uh, with Jesus talk with Jesus about who to meet with or when or you know if it's not time it's okay you know most people if some time goes by it's okay you know you you can just catch up a few months later um like I've had a couple of people who wanted to have their Sarah time every week and that's a lot <laughs> if that's not what God has like I'm missing out on the people that I should be sharing with um you know so I just have to be more intentional and not I mean make plans at some point um and there's there's a whole group of 
people from a couple years ago. Really long story, so I'm not going to go there. But God, like God's bringing them out of a place that they've been in that was not a good place, which I'm praising God for. But they all wanted to meet with me. All these ladies wanted to meet with me all in one day. And I'm like, whoa. Um, God said no more than two a week when they want to meet. Like, you know, and most weeks mm -hmm. it's just me and God and work or, you know, whatever I feel led to do. But um, being more intentional um, and listening as the Holy Spirit leads, um, that's that's what I'm learning. And it's not that I don't love all people. I I don't love, I mean, I love everyone, um, mm -hmm. but I have to walk in the wisdom of the Lord more so, mm -hmm. especially with the Kairos time <laughs> as they see it. But I know it's, um, or sorry, I miss, I miss it up. Um, but be more intentional with um, the time here on earth, even though I know we're not bound by that. But I hope that made sense. Yeah, that's that's cool. You got to, to me. It's like uh, uh, when we try to do anything, uh, the way we've always done something. You know, it's frustrating because it's not working. Mm -hmm. I I start to think it's like okay. Uh, if I'm one with the Lord, if as his so I'm in this world, I need to practice in his omniscience, all knowing he knows how to get each and every person on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I try to do it the way I think it should be done, or the results I want to see happen, which it may be godly, but it may be based in a religious spirit too in fact in the last couple of weeks uh while i've had this time uh i've been really looking at the religious spirit again and i believe for me part of that is to address the holy spirit in me first again uh because i don't want those limitations in me and and back when i first started looking into this i got i got a whole uh uh a lot of research on the spirit of religion that I've done and found some good stuff from some others that uh, <clears throat> that Holy Spirit would identify a time when I first got into this which was quite regular like every month or six weeks or something like that sometimes more than that that and he said I want you to look inside and find out where that religious spirit is and and you know, we want to blame somebody else, and, and, you know, God wants us to be free first. And every single time where Holy Spirit asks me to take a look, like, search me, oh God, test me, try me, uh, step into the courts of heaven in this, in this trial scenario where you're being tried to see if there's any wicked way, any religious spirit in you, in me, and every single time I would find a religious spirit in a thought, in a word, that I've spoken, uh, you know, since we're co-creators, we're, we're, we're partnering with darkness or either we're, we're uh, partnering with the light. And so I found a lot of times, well, every single time I found that I was, I was, I was a uh, habitation for a religious spirit. Actions, heart motives, mindsets, uh, the words I speak, the actions I take uh, are, are a lot uh, based on a religious spirit. And so uh, I'm going to be doing some more of that, but it's like I believe part of this as we're going into a full-blown, all-out maturation process, it's, I believe it's just a very short time. Uh, he's going to start releasing more and more to us, like this experience I've had going to heal this football player and more like that i have to practice in his or share in his omniscience okay i don't want to go in there like my agenda my self-will i want to go in as as he is so am i in this world and so it becomes something to me where where i die to my own 
right to be right. I die to my own self-will, my self-agenda, the way I think it should work out, the way I think it what should happen. And I have to totally, almost like that place John was talking about, enter into that rest where where I can I can clearly hear and see and know and perceive what the Lord is doing in this particular situation. Mm-hmm. I didn't go into this guy's hospital room and, and, and necessarily pray. I was just there observing. Then I saw this bright blue light come in the room, and I, I never did pray in the prayer. I, in the, what I thought I was going in to pray for him, I was just observing, and I saw this blue light, and I knew that he was going to be okay. And, and uh, so... Uh, so there's a, uh, I think there's a disconnect in each and every one of us. I'm just talking about me, that if I, I've had so many times where, where I've tried to do something, and it wasn't God's will, and God would, I don't know. He uses the same thing he says to Ian Clayton. He says, "Hey, big boy, <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> and to me, it's that's like. He's joking, but he's really serious. Like you messed up, but I want I don't want this to be a learning process for you. And let me show you uh, a a better way. I'll show you my way. And how tall so, are you, Terry? How tall? Five ten. Okay, I thought you were like six six or something. <laughs> yeah, <Why> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a giant. Amazing <laughs> the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No. Anyway, that's reminiscing about some old thoughts. I lied about my, when I was 15, I lied about my height because I was short. I was a short little dude, 5'2". I was like... You were? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I I guess you had to be 5'2 to be 5'10", so yeah. Yeah, and then that was like, I went to get my permit. It was like, I lied about my height. I, was, I didn't want to be five two. I'd shorter than everybody else in high school and or where middle school, and uh, so I lied. I was five three when I told her. I was like five. <laughs> so why did I? I should have done it better than that. I, I could have five said, six, five six or something. <laughs> I said five three, and I was five two. It was like, uh. it was like, uh, you know, why am I even thinking that? You know, and. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know where I'm going with that, but it's just, you know, the height, how tall are you story just brought back those, those wrong impressions of myself and, you know, comparing myself to others. And, you know, I think God is dealing with all that too. And when we tend to look at others and, you know, Joan, I think said, is like, you know, I just have to be me, something that, ex- that I just, you're the best you ever created right might as well be the best you ever made fearfully and wonderfully made right yeah yeah Mm yeah if god saw and it was good yeah well there you go it's what he said it's what he said in all my (laughs) five-two-ness it'd have been okay if you'd have just stayed five-two yeah, well, I'm glad I'm, I grew up a little bit. They gave me an award. For, I went to high school, and I was a little bit taller, and then I came back after, I believe it was a 40-year reunion or 20-year reunion, and I grew up in that amount of time, and and uh, and uh, it was a 20-year reunion. And... Uh, they gave me an award for the most changed. I was like, yes, I love change. I got an award for growing up. Oh, that's <laughs> growing cool. Growing taller. Anyway. That's cool. Everybody else doing good? Wild stories? I've got uh, a fun story. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go far. Well, uh, real briefly, um, I was... Uh, with a group, we were uh, doing ascension for the new year, and the person leading the group said, um, "Ask God just one thing He wants to tell you about 2023." So I began to chat with the Father, you know, about 
our calendar at work, which I was very grateful for the 2023 calendar already starting to fill up with, you know, new landscape jobs, but we've had a spate of unusually high maintenance people that have been very nervous about um, uh, everything. And we've been very happy to serve them and to answer all their questions and handhold them and walk them through. But I was like, father, why in this season are there so many more people that are so skittish and, and really need a lot more handholding and need so much more service and answering many, you know, 50 questions, what used to be an easy transaction. And so I was thinking this one client in particular, she asked me, she says, um, you know, you're doing my landscape in March. I'm signing the contract now. She was like, um, what if you die before you get to my yard? What do you, what happened? And I was like, nobody's asked me that. I'm like, in all the years I've been in business, nobody's asked me what happens if I died. And so I was like, what is, I was father, what is going on? And he said, well, think about this. Um, she mentioned that she was just going through cancer treatments. And so she was asking not, she was not asking me, what if I die? She was projecting out and asking herself, what if I die before I get this garden? So I was like, oh, okay, that's a little different twist. So he said, look at all the clients that are, you know, fussing or taking extra handholding. Look at them. And I kind of, in my mind's eye, look down the calendar and 90% of them, uh, he said, look, what do they all have in common? 90% of them either had just been through cancer treatments and beat cancer, had, were, uh, you know, are presently uh, undergoing treatments, or they're afraid of, or they've got family members that are dealing with that. So in every case, this was, and so he was like, you are, I'm going to bring you to a place of understanding where every time you get an opportunity to, and then you get to fill in the blank for each one of them, because there was a new kind of compassion that came through. So what I, I started, so this was a revelation. And so what uh, Terry it became was the basis for a court case because I because what father showed me was cancer is really civil war in the body. So the body attacks itself. So the, one of the roots of cancer is civil war. And so civil war in our nation uh, and, and you talk about the, and the cure for that is unity and oneness. So um, I had this amazing time with my black brother in Atlanta uh, praying today. He's over the, uh, a lot of uh, people in the music industry. But I said, uh, his name is Brandon. I said, Brandon, I said, you have a unique position because I said, you stand on generations of people that were enslaved. And yet you stand here as a son, as a free man really giving, uh, you know, uh, blessings and, and forgiveness and healing to all, he's been to all kinds of nations, to all kinds of people and places. And so I said, you are uniquely positioned as a son to stand at this gate of civil war and speak blessings. And so he got that. And we just went up and saw uh, the blood of Jesus being activated in a way I've never seen before. And we saw particles in the blood of Jesus that were like shimmering gold. And it was like these antibodies that were being activated to cover. And I really believe, so we started the case and started bringing evidence. And I brought testimonies of people that had been healed from cancer and he brought uh, different things. And we started making this court case and presenting it. And it was so exciting because we're asking God uh, we're asking the father to create cancer-free zones and to really uh, see, uh, you know, can't, we love to see cancer white from the earth, but it's got to <laughs> start somewhere. And so this is something I feel like it's a mandate that God's given me or given us at the barn uh, ministry there uh, for the new year. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Mm, that's good. That's yeah. incredible. Uh, that, is that like a manifestation of the leaves of the trees that are for healing? That is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. wow, that's awesome. 
Maybe that'll turn into something later on. Who knows? <laughs> we'll just have to see. Probably will. Probably no wonder will. you're in the landscape business. They're all intertwines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, something out of, I think Kat Kerr was talking about it, where she was talking about the creative labs of, of heaven where these ideas would just flow out like a river from heaven and even the people non-believers would pick up these ideas and i say well you know it's now time for uh, christian believers to pick those things up and run with them and bring us to the top instead of some of the people of the world we didn't do so well allowing other people to get them and maybe we were too lazy or or, or didn't do what was required to do to to activate those things and fulfill those things in our life and the changes that were needing to happen and, and so it was like as you were talking about that i saw that that happening again but it's it's in this vision it actually more people that are, are i just don't want to say believers i i I think more of the forerunners in the spirit realm that are are picking up on technologies and and revelations and ideas and patents and different things that that God is releasing that the world has never seen before. So I mm -hmm. think it's really really a powerful time. That's really cool, guys. That's awesome. So I expect more. <laughs> He's not going to yeah. start and leave it there, you know. It's just going to be right. just like a developing a, a a a picture, a masterpiece out of a a very little uh, uh, part of what you actually see. Well, I just have another sense of that unprecedented love. Unprecedented and, love, uh, yeah. It's the love that, um, wow, 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 wow. I went back and I read um, The Love Letters. It was a book called The Love Letters between Francis of Assisi and Claire of Assisi. And I'm not sure if there were true love letters, but I'm telling you, become totally undone for the love of God. And um, when they talk about brother dolphin, just swimming when he got a dip in the dolphin and he was a brother, the dolphin was a brother and the love for all of creation and just the love of God that went forth, whether or not there were real letters transit between them both and I don't know, I'm not sure. And um, it didn't concern me any, but there is a depth of love that Francis of Assisi encountered with all of creation. And he was able to, in this letter, in this, this, there were just letters and it was the expression of that love for God that comes forth. It's you're, you're, you're absolutely become undone and realizing let my love to mature. Let my love come into a new level. And um, it says, you know, my, the thoughts of which I'm aware do not mean anything because I'm trying to think without God. Mm. Wow. My real thoughts are the thoughts I think with God. And then I just skip here and I says, my thoughts are meaningless, but all creation lies in the thoughts that I think with God. And, and this, our entire being is that seamless union in him and with him. And, um, and I really believe that's where everything about us is a total outflow. And some like Sarah, they will stay with us or they will drift away, but you can't help yourself. You ju we just can't help ourselves. <laughs> wow, we have become this love. It's who we are. Mm. Yeah, amen. I love all those classical writers. Uh, Interior Castle by St. Teresa of Avila, that, and Madame Guyon is my favorite one of them. And uh, all, those, all those classical writers, just, 
talking about the dark night of the soul and, and its purpose there and, and all the, the love that there. It seems like we need to be uh, uh, stepping back into that, that level of, of love and mutual love. He didn't stop. <laughs> well, I think we just had too much going on where we, we, we got too busy or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's good. Thank you, Joan. It says that in Corinthians, um, when it's talking about love and love never failing, and we can do prophesy everything we can do everything raise the dead whatever but if we don't have love it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. we're not doing it out of a heart of love yeah. love for the father love for jesus amen amen yeah i've gone back to the chapter of john 15 16 and 17 after i went up to the courts of heaven with that court case you know I came out and I'm like, I realized before all that took place that uh, y'all got to remember everything of mine was stolen. All, all my paperwork down to my underwear, toothbrush. So I've lost all my studies, all my Bibles and everything. And so, but the Lord brought me back into remembrance uh, that I was studying John 15, 16 and 17 because I didn't really think that I loved him the way he loved me. And I think that I've always fought to do that and that will never happen. So I was learning about love and I don't know about y'all, but with me, when I'm learning about something, I fail at it really bad. <laughs> and then I learned through my failing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so when I came out of the courtroom, I, it, it's been kind of dark for me because I had to pull out my RV and, and move in it. And to, and to go back really quick about the, the, the cold and the freezing, it was so cold in here and so dark. Like it was a minus 10 here in Shreveport. And it was like I was trying to heat the outside. I had to pull all my heaters, all my electric blanker, blankets and my my breaker kept tripping and and everything it was so cold but i was so proud that my water didn't break <laughs> you know everybody's water lines were busting and everything but but during that time you know the courtroom of heaven uh and and what i experienced in the courtroom i was so thankful and so grateful but like i just i just knew that that I was, when I went in, there was something in me that God was going to honor and everything, but I still felt like I was lacking in love. And I, those issues, I just needed to clear up more than the love that, that, that I was trying to tangle with my mind with. But, and then I went to a scripture and I might be getting off trail here and I'm sorry, I'll try to come back. This is something I always do. But in, in uh, Song of Songs, it talks about don't awaken love before it's time. And then, um, and then, and then I was brought to a Hebrews 6.10 that I, even in my sin back in the early days, I would ask pastors, what does that Hebrews 6.10 that if you, if you're enlightened and that you go and sin it and you taste God and then you go and sin, there's no hope for repentance. And nobody could ever explain that to me. And for some reason those two scriptures kept coming back to mind. I'm like, I'm I'm trying to associate them those two. I I still don't have a clear answer. But I'm I'm I I'm just trying to share something of what I'm going through. Uh, the holidays was hard, but not hard. Like I was alone and I, I had battled with another part of my family that I just had to step away from. And at that darkness and that, that alone time kind of pushed me into 
his presence, just a little bit of taste of it. And so coming back now after winning that court case in my way, I didn't win it totally, but it was highly favored. It was joyous. It's just bringing me back to the importance of that love. And I'm not there yet, but I'm really fighting hard to get there. <laughs> so if y'all have any any insight on those two scriptures, I'm just longing to hear something about that, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. I don't have anything particular right now, but definitely be praying for you. Oh, well, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I'm, I'm so thankful, so thankful and so grateful that I did not die in my sin. Like I, there was so many, I mean, I've had guns in the back of my head. I've jumped out of two story buildings trying not to get shot. And, and I could have died in my sin. I would take this pain today because I know I'm saved and I know, but I want to know that love that God has wants me to know of. And it's just really hard. Cause I just get, sometimes I, I get tired of, of the verbal, abuse, you know, that people put on each other and, and I just, I just cut it off and just walk away because I just like, why, why are we, some Christians claiming to do all this great kingdom work and then can say something so mean. And then I'm like, I want to know, I want to grow, grow in that, that fruit. And I know it wasn't by mistake that, that the Lord led me to John 15, 16 and 17, that if, if I abide in him and that he's praying for me night and day. And that love, I'm, I'm wanting to get entangled of it. There was a, a meaning that somebody was talking about love, and it meant an entanglement. And I, I, to, all that to say is I don't want to go back into the courts of heaven without knowing that love. You know, I know that I'm loved by God, and I know I could never love him as much as he loves me. But I know if I'm a son of God, and I know that I'm a son of God because I've had a vision of it, uh, where I come back with him and all my focus is on him and what he's doing. But I'm doing it also in, in a weird way, but I'm not doing anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, but he gives us the credit, but he's doing it all. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like, it, it's, 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 I know all that, but I'm having a hard time getting to that mountain of of conquering or are we always in that pursuit of that love i don't and it's just really hard yeah, time. I, yeah i have uh i have a suggestion uh <laughs> instead of trying to get there why don't you just step into it mm -hmm. begin to praise him for it that you're like you're already there absolutely yeah. And by your faith, you know, faith without, this is another scripture that I've been looking at, faith without works is dead. So, you know, a common thing we've learned to do is to wait and contend and tarry and press in, or I hope to have this happen, or I'm going to get there one day, you know, and, but that's really, uh, deny scripture, right? So what we really need to do is to step into that love. Mm -hmm. Begin to declare and decree and give him praise and thanksgiving. Father, I thank you so much that you're expressing your amazing love for me. And I'm doing, I'm giving right back to you the love that you deserve. I honor you. And I mean, it can go on and on and on and on. And it will as you, as you, as you just step into that relationship with him in love. He is love. So you're stepping into him. And so. To me, it's what I've learned. Part of the transition that I've had to make was get out of those old waiting, contending, tearing, pressing in kind of mindsets and move into where I'm just stepping in. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think there's a religious part of me that's still trying to fight and take and keep its ground. I think you're right about that. Uh, I, I have been doing uh, 
I've been before I go before I work from 11 to 7 at night and so that leaves me to come home and I get I I'm so blessed that I get to pray for hours do my sermons you know uh do some declarations I'm learning how to pray in and this the separation of it all but I just you're right you're absolutely right. And I'm, I'm going to do that. And I thought I had been, but there's, I just needed to hear somebody say it to open it up. So I'm yeah. glad, I'm glad I said it. Yeah, I was me kind too. of embarrassed <laughs> at, about it. Like, Oh my God, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a newbie, but I've been in the word for 30 years, even in my sin, you yeah. know, and I'm just, yeah. I'm missing it somewhere. So I'm glad I said something. Thank you. Yeah, Lord, yeah me Lord, too. You know, you know what the Lord it. told me. Yeah. You're you know, not missing, Lord. You're such an encouragement to us. Even as you shared, you're a blessing to the body of Christ. And it's yeah. because the love that you carry in your heart. It's we don't, it's it's all of what he did. And we're just, as Terry said, yeah. we're just resting in it. Yes. I, my best effort isn't going to cut it. Thank yeah. you. But it's just Thank really you. just who we are. It's just who I am. And it's everything is just because of who he is and who I am in him. Yeah. And, Thank and it's an outflow. It's not a do, it's an outflow. And you are I just when every time you share, it's you, there's such an encouragement that comes from you. There's just there's just and a blessing. There's your your words carry so much. Your voice, Thank everything you. it's just amazing. I just love to hear you speak. Thank and you. I, that encourages you. me. You're beautiful. You are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Well, here's here's another thought. One one thing the Lord told me when I was looking into what I just told you about stepping in. He said that uh, stepping in is an accelerator to the manifestation. Okay. So waiting yeah. and contending and tearing and pressing in doesn't manifest anything because you're waiting you're tearing you're pressing in hope this happens one day you're not walking in faith so you're waiting for something to happen now faith is a tangible substance of the things hoped for right so in faith you're 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 stepping in to the unseen realm or unperceived realm that already exists and yes. so now you're accelerating the manifestation rather than waiting, contending, tearing, pressing in to something that never is going to happen. You know, God is sovereign, but he may do it <laughs> despite <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but just begin to step into that and, and begin to praise him and thank him for manifesting, demonstrating that love and and. You don't have to be perfect, like Joan said. It's not a performance issue. It's just a, it's a read the B attitudes. Yes, <laughs> I did, <laughs> and I actually did, but the, it was like it was like when it went to you know those that are pure of heart. I'm like, dang, I missed it there. And yeah. those who have clean hands, and I'm like, oh no, I don't know. <laughs> You know, yeah. I could talk myself, and I've got to stop it. I, I, I know that. I just had to have it come out of my mouth so yeah. that I could pin up. I do, and I don't feel safe anywhere. Uh, this place, I feel safe, and I thank y'all for that and the encouragement because I've just kind of had to step away because, uh, and you know, people say, "Well, if you go alone, you're on your own island. That's prideful." And I'm like, no, I think God's hiding me to get through this. So yeah, I'm going to yeah. be thankful, even in this freezing RV. <laughs> I'm, I'm not freezing anymore. I'm going to be, and it's dark in here, but I'm going to be thankful that he's hiding me so yeah. that I can, can those things that I can step into. Mm -hmm. So y'all have greatly encourage me thank you so much there you go everything has a divine purpose to it yeah if, without y'all i wouldn't have known to go into the courts of heaven and that is a great testimony i still i'm, I'm still going back through that I'm like amazed at what god did i'm so thankful thank yeah. you yeah that's so good thank you lauren that's awesome <laughs> thank you <laughs>
keep on keeping on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, I guess we'll close here. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Just burning something in you you want to share? Uh, if not, we can move on. Oh, Jenny. I do. Okay. I do have. Um, so it's really burning in me because this is new territory for me. But ever since, like almost with the start of the new year, God's been laying prayers on my heart. And I just finished a land prayer that I wrote for um, stepping into the fullness of the land that we have, the promise of his inheritance, of God's inheritance. And um, using the courts of heaven to bring up your property to get it registered and then take that and see the blessing unfold here on earth. It was really cool what God opened up and showed to me and just reading through um, in my quiet time in my Bible time and just being able to write that prayer. And then now I have another one. It's almost like for me, I'm noticing fresh problems, fresh solutions to create prayers for that. Wow. <laughs> so it's so another one that's already burning inside of me to write down. So I'm really excited to see what God does. You want to share them? You want to have sure. one ready? Can, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yes. Yes. Hey, and if you want to post anything to the courts of heaven, we don't have public posting there anymore, but okay. send me a message and I'll put your name on it and give you all okay. the credit for it if you want to share. Those are good good things. People people like that. I like it too. So if you have one of those you want to you want to do in closing we'll we'll sure. join with you in prayer and okay i'll do that make it a class action suit all right <laughs> love it okay so here we go dear god i come before you in the mighty name of jesus i come into your gates with thanksgiving in my heart and praise on my lips psalm 104 let everything that has breath praise the lord for he is worthy of our praise psalm 150 and Verse six, the heavens are glad and the earth rejoices because of who you are. Do you see the trees sway? They too are singing for joy. All that carries life shares their song. The fields are bursting to make your praises known. Psalm 96, 11 through 12. Today, I come before you with repentance in my heart and ask that you would wipe away any undealt sin that would invoke the curse of the ground on my property. Genesis 4, 11 through 12. I bring my property before you with legal title deed at hand. I ask that you would enter my property into the records of the courts of heaven, thus establishing my inheritance that can never be taken away or trespassed on. Genesis 12, 6 and 13, verse 17. I ask that you would remove the curse associated with lack of strong yield when cultivating the ground. Genesis 4, 11 through 12. Cain committed treason by destroying life he had no right to destroy. After receiving his judgment of exile from you, he aimlessly wandered, never rightfully owning land, yet illegally obtaining it so that his curse has spread throughout all land on earth with the intent of reverse of duel. As a son of the Most High God, a descendant and co-heir with Christ, Romans 8, 14 through 22, I ask that the curse of aimless wandering and lack of strong yield be removed henceforth from my property and new boundaries be drawn and established that stake my rightful claim to the inheritance you have given me. My property shall become my land, my possession for me and my descendants to remain and dwell on. Psalm 23, 6, 69, verse 35. As my land is now established in the courts of heaven, I would request all nature within the bounds of my land to be freed from its bondage to decay and, decru and corruption. Romans 8, 21. I ask that it would moan no longer, Jeremiah 12, 4 and 11, but rather sing out in its strength. Establish your bountiful blessing of abundant life that comes from your presence. I invite and welcome you to my land. Make it your dwelling place. When you visit the earth, you saturate it with water and greatly enrich it, for the river of God is full of water. Your water, you water my fields furrows abundantly. You make the soil soft with showers, blessing the sprouting of its vegetation. Psalm 65, 9 through 13. May an outward sign of your established presence be a settling of peace over the land. Let it become a resting place for the weary and restoration of life for all who inhabit it, including the wildlife you have provided, Psalm 91 and Psalm 92. I also 
place shields of protection over my land that act like a Faraday cage, blocking the illegal trespassing attempts coming onto it in every form, including, but not limited to, chemtrails, pesticides, heavy metals, airborne agents, drones, spyware, wireless transmitted waves, and all wave-based attacks to cause harm and destruction, as well as any other form of weaponized demonic activity. I speak that they will be overruled, rendered void in their mission, and returned on the heads of their senders by the power of the blood of Jesus. I declare that my land would be a habitation of peace, a dwelling place of your established presence as part of my inheritance for all generations to come, and a cultivated land yielding strong fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was, that was loaded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so let's, let's see us claim some land back that belongs to us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to share when you do more of them. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get out of here and uh, have an awesome night tonight and, a, and a, a totally awesome day tomorrow. And we'll see you next time around. And so good to see your faces again and hear you all share. And, and uh, we'll be back next week or Sunday, uh, Sunday night. All right, guys. Have a great week. See you later. Yeah, you too, Terry. Oh, no. Take care. God bless you. Have a good day, Val. <laughs> Good night.